Hello, and welcome to LunchBots by Bird Brain Technologies. LunchBots is a web series dedicated to teachers who are using robotics in their classrooms and to teachers who are planning to use robotics in their classrooms. My name is Matt. I'm the technology coach for Bird Brain, and I'm here to share some practical tips and tools that will help you bring robotics to your students. We're going to begin this episode the way we begin all episodes, and that's with a brief video. This video is going to function as a conversation starter, and today's conversation is all about mechanisms. What is a mechanism? According to Wikipedia, a mechanism is a device that transforms input forces and movement into a desired set of output forces and movement. Why is this relevant? Because you're handing your students this. It's a servo. Servos spin back and forth, and that's pretty much it. Now, if a student is inspired to build a robot that spins, well, that's awesome. There's some really cool robots that could be made with this motion. But I would hate for this, the servo, the starting point of the project, the entry point into robotics, to feel like a design constraint. There's a lot of creative possibilities with the servo, and mechanisms unlock those possibilities. Students will know that in addition to making something that spins in a half circle, it's possible to transfer that motion into a motion like this. Or this. Or this. Or this. Or even this. These are the five easy mechanisms that we're going to be exploring today. So let's talk about that first mechanism, the push rod. Push rods and servos are pretty much best friends. Anyone that builds radio controlled cars or RC planes or RC boats uses servos with push rods almost exclusively. These little holes in the servo horns, they fit push rod hardware. You can buy this hardware online or at a hobby shop, but you can make the same hardware out of a paper clip. Granted, it's not as strong, but if you're making your robot out of craft material, it'll do the trick. This is my favorite mechanism to show to students because it uses something so common in every day, a paper clip, and it uses it in a really cool way. It drives home the idea of making as a whole. It's not about buying a bunch of expensive specialized parts. It's about using the common objects around you in uncommon ways. What can you do with the push rod? It takes a rotary motion and it turns it into a kind of swinging motion, like a door. I think it makes a really great mouth. These are just two examples. I'm sure your students will come up with a hundred more ideas. The next mechanism we're going to look at is the winch. Winches are usually used to wind up rope. It turns that rotary motion into a sort of up and down motion. Two winches could also be used to make a left and right motion, like this. But more often, I've seen this mechanism used like a reel in a slot machine. It could be used to make eyes that blink or change expressions, or it could scroll through words in a story. Again, two examples. I'm sure your students are going to come up with many more ideas. The next mechanism consists of two parts, a cam and a follower. Students often want to create a linear up and down motion. It's a surprisingly difficult motion to achieve and a cam and follower is the most effective way I've seen to achieve it. A common problem when building this mechanism is that the follower is too light. It doesn't want to drop when the cam drops. An easy solution to this problem is to glue a few coins or a washer to the base of the follower. It'll add a little extra weight. Here's one fun project you could do with the cam mechanism. This is the crank, link, and slider. Like the cam and follower, it's a linear motion. But unlike the cam and follower, which only creates a vertical linear motion, the crank, link, and slider can create a horizontal linear motion and a vertical linear motion. It's a bit tricky to build, and you'll have to pick up one of these heavy-duty hole punchers. But it offers a lot of flexibility, and it gives your students the chance to experiment with different linkage points to discover how this changes the motion. Keep plenty of extra jumbo craft sticks around. You'll go through a lot of these when building the mechanism. When I look at a crank link and slider, I see a design solution. But other educators might look at it and see a geometry lesson. 
There are standards aligned activities all throughout these projects. And our curriculum designer, Dr. Bambi Brewer, has written up a whole range of standards aligned projects, including one on mechanisms. I'll provide a link to her page on mechanisms in the description section of this video. The final mechanism that we're going to be looking at is the cable system. I just mentioned Dr. Brewer a moment ago. Well, she made a whole robot garden with flowers that use this mechanism. Here's one of those flowers up close. And here's a hand. When I made this hand, I had dreams of creating a robot that could spell words in sign language. It turns out that the human hand could do a lot of wild stuff that robot hands have trouble replicating. I'll have to hand that challenge off to the teachers in this community. Any teacher who has led a robotics activity, particularly robotics activities using craft materials, will have noticed that students tend to get overly focused on the programming and the decoration often at the expense of the mechanical function of the robot. So I'm going to share detailed building instructions for each one of these mechanisms in the description section of this video. My hope is that these videos will help to remind your students that a robotics project is equal parts mechanical engineering, design, and computer programming. For those of you watching live, hang tight. We're going to begin our conversation right after this video. For those of you watching an archived version of this video, we can continue the conversation on Twitter, that's at birdbraintech hashtag lunchbots, or in the comment section of this video. I'll see you in a few weeks when we're going to be talking about wireless Bluetooth control for your robot using your tablet or your phone. Alright, I'll see you then.